Okay, here we've got that soft military bottle that's really warmed up with the sun's rays there. I'm just gonna force fit it into the spa tap like that. I'm gonna turn it, I'm gonna invert and insert. So there we are. And now look at the power shower you're getting out of that. Look at that as a power shower. All right there, another Dragon's Den uh, response video, reaction video. Uh, now this one is somewhat different though because I know the geezer. Now I know him quite well and he's actually a nice bloke. We're not talking at the moment because he's blaming me for a mutual friend falling out with him because that's good at in your late 40s, early 50s to be. <laughs> But, you know, we, we come from the same place, uh, we grew up together, and he come and see me do comedy. When I went and done a gig down in Hastings, he lived nearby, and he uh, came down and watched, and it, and it was nice, and it's a shame that we've fallen out, to be honest with you. You know, he asked me for some help with this project, and I put a lot of work into it, and he didn't take on any of what I said. <laughs> but I do like him, and he was very complimentary about the crack diaries and he said that he played it to his kids to put them off drugs and <laughs> if you'd have played that to me as a kid I'd have gone out and scored some crack right so anyway this is his product so obviously I've got a bit of background on it he is a nice fella it's a bit of a shame and I'm not here just to take the piss out of him this is just another Dragon's Den response video so here you go Spartap Spartap um, it's actually, if you can see my cursor, it's this little sensual item at the bottom. It's like some kind of silicon nipple situation. <laughs> it's a silicon nipple situation with some shoelaces and that's it. I do like, you know, being in uh, e-commerce and, and uh, marketing. I like this kind of uh, nonsense we've got here cord lock toggle got a cord lock toggle there this is the best bit soap station now you could just call that the bottom of a bottle but soap station is a is a, is a great call um it's i mean essentially there he's marketing gravity <laughs> nylon cord four in total so here you go you you can um you can put that would be better. You can put this uh, silicon nipple situation onto a bottle and create a pissy little stream of water, which when you're trying to sell it, call a shower or a tap. Spa tap. <laughs> shower head. <laughs> okay, and uh, there's this little air valve here. And yeah, so that's the bottom. That That's, uh, you know, that's pretty much all you want to know. So um, I had to dig this out of daily motion because it doesn't seem to be on YouTube. But you get the idea. But before we get into Dragon's Den, I also found this other little clip of him. So enjoy this. Hi, I'm Stuart from Spartap. Spartap's this device here. Fits onto any bottle and transforms it into a tap or a shower giving you a water saving wash anywhere you want uh, i was very uh, kindly invited to do uh, a, an article uh, with business matters and it's just been absolutely brilliant we've really enjoyed the uh, working with vicky and magic and the article is just fantastic it's, it's something i'm really proud of and i highly recommend uh, coming to one of these wonderful functions because it's been such a great a great gathering and a meeting of like minds so yeah my name's Stuart and that's the Spartap. Thanks very much. So there you have it. Let's have a look and see how it gets on in the den. Now, this in this particular series or season, they had this thing where they cut away to a couple of his mates and it's his mate and his missus. Um, and they sort of, you know, oh, come on, Stu, say this. Uh, they Dragon's Den 
drop this out in the end but that's why there's a, a, a peculiar anomaly with the friends in the background it wasn't just for <laughs> the spa tap let's go now i'm not au fait with daily motion so there might be some live editing issues but we'll do our best hit it first up tonight is an expat who's traveled thousands of miles from his adopted home australia for the chance to tap the <laughs> what is he doing a little bit of shadow boxing there i'll tell you what i hadn't seen him for about three years once and i'd been living in bethnal green going to the paragon gym doing kickboxing and i think he'd been out in thailand or something and he came around my house and i was like hello Stu. nice to see him like he's quite easy on the eye one for the ladies without a doubt and um i said how have you been we had a little chat and that and I, he said he'd been to thailand i said oh i've been Funnily enough, I've been doing a bit of kickboxing. He went, he went, yeah, me too. He pulled his jeans down. He had a pair of Thai boxing shorts underneath and just started doing these high kicks in my mother's front room. I was like, yeah, no, nice. Calm down, please. Dragons for investment. Life's journey has brought me to this moment. I'll go in now. I'll put my best foot forward. I know I've got something good. I'm just going to see what the den, the universe <laughs> presents to me. He's a real hippie. I think he's a flat earther. I mean, you know, <laughs> he, he used to make music and they'd be going, Zion, Jarastafari, all that lark, you know. I mean, I had dreadlocks, but yeah. It's time to tame some dragons. Stuart's wife, Emily, has shared not just the flight from Down Under, but the long journey the invention has been on too. Come on, Stu. Can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> She'll be watching in our reaction room with family friend Giles. Ever since I've met Stu, he's always had ideas. Now it's like he's finally found, this is it, this is the one. <laughs> and now to get the opportunity to be here is just brilliant. It could be a complete life changer. Maybe it's just going to happen. Hello, dragons. My name's Stuart Mason. I'm the inventor of Spartac. I'm here today with the opportunity of a 65... You fucking bastards. You... Some you... pounds investment for a 20% equity share. The world is in the grip... I'll tell you what, I'd take any offer from Sarah Willingham. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but... Oh, I'm in. ...of a water crisis, and Spartac is a water-saving, eco-friendly, mobile tap and shower system <laughs> that fits in your pocket. So it's made from silicone and it instantly attaches to any bottle, creating a flow-controllable tap or shower that can dispense water in different ways. <laughs> you know, like a bottle turned upside down with an old put in it could, yeah. I'll just quickly demonstrate. So if you wanted a small amount of water, say for a hand wash you can get you'd undo the uh, lid of the bottle pour some in your hands and wash them give it a gentle squeeze <laughs> give the nipple a little you <laughs> can touch it up a bit you get a little hand wash if you wanted a bit more water you'd open the bottle and pour a bit more out you can pull the bung out and well, you get enough water for say a shower <laughs> shower what for your action man this one litre bottle. <laughs> I, I don't have to add anything to that expression. So we'll dispense water over eight minutes and 30 seconds, which is extreme water saving. <laughs> that is extreme water saving, but if you just use the lid, I think it could be even more extreme. We could call it excessive water saving. So in 18 months of trading... I'm in. We have a turnover of £29,000. We have sold, Terrible. sold over 4,500 units. The UK retail price is £14.95. Ouch. Our wholesale is between four fifty and eight fifty, depending on volume. Now, I have information about these prices, and he's been absolutely stitched up, and I won't give you that information because it's not fair on him, but unless he addresses that, he's going to continue to be stitched up. This is a long time ago. I'm not sure if this is even something that still happens. Our landed cost is £3. In Europe, 33 million people go camping, and in... <laughs> 
and 32 and a half million of them use bottles of water. I mean, it's still half a million people. In the US, 45 million people per quarter go camping. Spartap has multiple applications within multiple markets, including the huge humanitarian market. And we recently won first prize in Standard Bank's Water for Africa competition, beating 470 other entrants from around the world. <laughs> they must have been dreadful. And winning 10,000 US dollars. So, thank you. That's my pitch. Anyone is welcome to come up and have a closer look. Here we go. Good work. A pitch with green credentials from inventor Stuart Mason. He's hoping to secure £65,000 in exchange for 20% of his company. <laughs> when I see it, I must admit, I don't... The, the word, two words that don't come to mind are spa and tap. <laughs> company. Just, Just give like it that. the gentlest of squeezes, that's it. <laughs> Just a, a sensual little... A sensual little rub. And that gives you between 15 to 20 mil. Deborah Meaden made her first millions in British holiday parks. As a hand washing thing, that does actually work? does work. <laughs> I'm going to release one, I'm going to call it a lid. So, you if you just literally want to, just a. Just, oh. Well, you squeeze it with the very hand you. Yeah, oh, I see, with the hand you. Yeah. That's, That's it. it. And now she's keen to ascertain whether there's a market. Admit it, if you found one of those in your friend, family, or partner's luggage, You'd have to speak to another friend about how you're going to confront them about that, you know, that you found. It's got a touch of the bum fanny about it. For this product in her former sector. So in the UK, yep. um, how big is the camping market? Well, uh, uh, 5.4 million families will just go in tents. And what do they currently do for water? Depends. If you go to... People go... There's... Camping, camping parks, it ain't the 70s. There's plenty of watering when you go camping these days. Wild camping, that means they'll take their own water in. But of the market, how many go wild camping and how many go on camping sites that have got plenty of water access? Yeah, well, on camping sites, you know, probably... <laughs> probably is amazing. Um, some... Maybe... Six. <laughs> Probably, maybe. The, the, the pyramid of trust is shrinking. 60% will go to campsites where there is water. But, for example, if, uh, dog people who are uh, walking the dog. Yeah, but go here. <laughs> dog people walking their dog. I had a dog. I, I, didn't, I didn't need a, a spa tap, I, I'll be honest with you. Humanitarian. And they don't want their uh, car to get muddy after, like, muddy paws. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've got two options there, right? You get a bottle of water and pour it on the dog's paws, or you set up your spa tap at 15 quid with the cords and, and then squeeze it on the dog's paws, <laughs> yeah, with your two hands being used. Yeah, I don't know about that one. So, it's just... <laughs> yeah. OK, no, you need to come up with... I, I don't want this to go wrong for you. OK, But Ouch. you need to come up with something a lot stronger than that. It's... Well, to keep clean, to clean children. <laughs> <laughs> a bath, maybe? But when? Well, when in the houses or in... No, <laughs> When? It's a fair point, though. Clean children, cars, you know, lots of things need cleaning, Deborah. When they're, when they're travelling, when they're out and about, it is like whenever you need a tap. Vegetables? You can use this. Pardon? Vegetables? Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm glad you've reminded me of that. Oh, my God, yeah. You can get it for free. Thanks for that, Tika. Uh, You're completely guessing, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I feel for him, man. And also, look, this is going to be, what, 10 minutes? And he said to me, he said, you're there for an hour and a half. He said, it's, it's tough. And, and of course, this, I say this on every one of these, they're making entertainment. This isn't, this isn't your standard business meeting. So it's, it's, it's edited to make these people look, you know, worse, essentially. It's, it's, it's entertainment. And, but he is still guessing, and that is still funny. 
I'm I'm not I'm not completely guessing. <laughs> Partially guessing is amazing. Have you had a quote for any quantity that gets you down to a dollar fifty? I've had a quote that's got me down to uh, two two dollar fifty <laughs> on a high. <laughs> so not the one fifty or one that you just said. Hundred thousand. <laughs> Ah, oh, feel free. I nice think week. it's pressure's building, don't you, Em? Yeah. I absolutely see. When you say the pressure's building, you mean the pitch is collapsing, yeah? You know, this would be a, an enormous amount of value by the side of a latrine, um, yes. where you, you've oh, got so a permanent what? latrine, as an outdoor loo. But, uh, but I just think you'd have to produce <laughs> it at a price that was affordable in that market. Yeah, about 10 pence each. Which would mean your margin per item is 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 tiny. About two pence each. Well, actually, minus two dollars forty. Uh, which would mean it's you know it's not going to be a huge uh, business. <laughs> Look at his face. Look, he's just remembering his first wife when she got out the old butt plug. Look, he's just remembered that moment. That's what that boat race is about. Put it down. <laughs> Nick Jenkins can see the potential but not the profitability for the product use in sanitation projects. Talk of which has given Peter Jones concerns of a rather unsavoury nature. <laughs> just letting it dangle. Let me get rid of Daughter of Albion's... Um, there you go. And continue. Isn't, it, isn't this going to pass on potentially disease, though? I'm going to be touching this sort of teat at the end or whatever you <laughs> teat. want to call it. Nipple. I don't think that this is something people would want to share, is it? Thank you, Pia. You've hit the nail on the head. This is a personal tap. This is, there's no more sharing any more taps. Uh, and now you fucked up your humanitarian thing. What, are they all going to have one each at your minus $2.40 uh, not profit? They're all going to have one each, are they? So they're all going to have a bottle of water each, so you don't need them. Uh, 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 oh, no, but uh, in the uh, humanitarian, uh, 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 I mean, you're okay, this, in, in, in a in in a development environment where it, you don't amazing political correctness. Just say Africa. You don't get one latrine per person. You get a lot of shared latrines. So someone has just come out of the loo, and they want to wash their hands. So they've put fecal. Sh hang on, is he about to say fecal matter? Fecal material on the teat. <laughs> How <laughs> shit? How much of an issue is that? Well, quite a lot, really. If you've got shit on it. Oh. <laughs> When you're actually using one, if you have got unclean hands, you can actually very easily clean the whole unit. Because it's- Oh, you can just rub all the shit into it. <laughs> made of silicone. So the unit is very easy to keep clean. Hey. Yeah, I mean, I, I would need to be a little bit more convinced about that because I can't <laughs> see people necessarily carrying this themselves to their latrine. I do see this thing hanging outside, in which case you're gonna have to stop people actually, you know, touching it with the hands that they've just- Buy it, maybe? touch their bottom with. Nick Jenkins gets down to the nitty gritty of some major concerns over cross-contamination. Can Sarah Willingham see beyond the issue to identify a lucrative opportunity? The question is, can she see beyond my issues and be my wife? I think it's a really cool product, first of all. It clearly works. Yes. She likes him. Thank you, Come Sarah. On. I could see, you know, last year at Glastonbury, I think there's quite a lot of us that would have, could have done with it. And, you know, I, I can... Yeah, I reckon Sarah Williams was definitely amongst the lump and proletariat, yeah, swimming in their own shit. <laughs> sure, sure. You didn't have hot showers in the VIP bit or anything. Completely see the use of it in that type of environment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's there. I can't, to be honest with you. I can't. Now, that doesn't mean you can't sell something, but I, I can't see what it offers over a bottle of water. Yeah. The challenge is, is in the consumer market, which is, let's call it half of your goal is to get into the consumer market, the other half humanitarian. In the consumer market, I think it is so niche which doesn't make it a massive business opportunity for the consumer side. So then I got very excited about the humanitarian side, very excited actually, until fecal material was mentioned. Peter dropped the sanitary... Sanitary... <laughs> Peter done a shit. Sanitary bomb. 
in the eyes. You know, both the birds have sort of, you know, they've been very gentle with him and, and very encouraging. You know, I kind of want to. Why? Why would you want to if you don't think the product can make money? Because he's attractive. A very interesting lesson here about life. You'll notice that Peter Jones is very kind to brunette milfs, you know, and he's invested in a lot of brunette milfs that the, the rest of the dragons have looked at him like, what? And I haven't. I've, I've looked at him and thought, here he goes again. He's thinking about when he has to go and visit her. Oh, okay. Would I like to come for a glass of wine, Sandra? Uh, but I, I haven't found my reason, so I'm afraid I'm out. Thank you, Walter. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh Deborah. Interesting. The fellow went, ah, oh, Stu, and the woman went, ah, oh, Deborah. Gender politics, eh? What a thing. Deborah Meaden pours cold water on the idea of a Meaden Mason partnership. And it looks like Peter Jones has made up his mind, too. You would want this to be of a high volume product at a low, at a low cost and everybody to use it. And unfortunately, I don't think that we're. You, the communities of which you might want to go into with water aid um, and the like, I think that the cost will need to be a lot lower and then also you will have a cross-contamination issue because not everybody will be able to have their own individual one. So, sadly, I'm out. But good luck to you. Oh, he's nearly crying. He's nearly... <laughs> he's nearly crying. Nice, mate. He's crying. Yeah, he's nearly crying. Crying. <laughs> I think it's a great idea, I mean, I like it. And I'm thinking to myself, he's a nice guy. If I want to invest, how can I add value? There you go again, he's a nice guy. This, this, these things count in life, you know, and, and so they should. You know, if, if looks and manner are your strengths, then use them. You know, if, if your intelligence and inventions ain't so good. <laughs> Sorry. And, and I think, I think what, what this needs is your perseverance. <laughs> Go on, fuck off and get on with it on your own. You ain't getting a penny off me. But I don't see this, for me, as being an investment where I'll get a return back on it. And for that reason, I'm not going to invest and I'm out. Thank you, Toba. You know, if it was like 50p and it was on the on the desk in millets or something, or someone walking around Glastonbury. But again, I don't really see what it offers more than a bottle of water, I don't. Showered with compliments, but no cash, as Tuka Suleiman becomes the fourth. <laughs> they, they've all got that weird little face when they look back, they look at it and they think back to their perverted youth and they think, where do I know this from? <laughs> Ouch! Oh yeah, it was then. Dragon to bow. Look at the face. That that's either him being pegged or <laughs> that's a that's a face that says fecal matter. Out. <laughs> Nick Jenkins is Stuart's last hope. Can details of that industry award persuade him into an investment? So this went to a panel who looked at it. Of expert judges. Of expert judges yeah. specifically looking at it as a water and sanitation product. Yeah, Water for Africa competition, we were first prize. This is good. Come on. We were actually mentioned in the HIF, the Humanitarian Innovation Fund report. Yeah. And it contrasts us with what else is on available within that market. There is there's not a lot things like a bucket <laughs> which is actually quite a good invention if you think about it a bucket when you, you know when you need water um. I, I bet older Stu's human spa tap is <laughs> is squeezing itself at this moment look I, I mean I, I, I hope I hope that, that, that you just carry on with that and, you, you, and, and, and actually it turns out that this ha doesn't have any cross-contamination issues. I just can't quite get past it. Um, but I'm afraid I, I, I can't invest. I wish you all the best and I'm out. Thank you. So that's it. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Stuart leaves the den with no cash. Oh, hey, did you see a little, little sparkle in Maiden's eye? 
but it won't stop his steadfast determination to succeed. I'm not too embarrassed to say I've still never heard of a latrine before. Really? really? No. Here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> tape, Mum. <laughs> All right, we didn't get the investment, but I'll have the whole thing. Because <laughs> like, that 20%, oh. that is going to be worth... About 40 quid next year. Millions and millions. <laughs> next year, Rodney will be millionaires. And millions. I guarantee that. Well, there you go, people. Spa Tap. I mean, the website's still up, so if you're going camping and you don't know how to use a bottle, maybe get yourself one and help my mate out. Ta da!